and we've snatched it from the grasp of Mark Webber. We come round the final corner for Williams for Great Britain to win the championship. We're not going to win the world championship guys, Sebastian Vessel takes the chequered flag. He is the world champion. We're going to have to settle for second in the championship. And just like in 2010, we have won the world championship in Abu Dhabi. It feels brilliant. We nearly did it in 2011. It isn't quite three in a row, but here we go. Winning the world championship for the second time. What's up guys and welcome back to another video and today we are starting the 2013 season of the ultimate career drop a like if you're happy to see season 4 here and today we are here at Hareth for the pre-season testing and I'm going to be giving you a quick run through all the teams and how they're shaping up for 2013. Starting off then with my team Williams who are looking pretty much where we were last year in terms of pace but instead of Pastor Maldonado I am this year partnered by Sam Bird, the rookie driver and once former Mercedes test driver and reserve driver but of course I'm the reigning champion Bird is a rookie. It's looking like a bit of a strange decision from Williams, but they do truly believe that he can give myself a run for my money. The question with Williams is though, will they be able to keep up with the development of the big teams like Red Bull, McLaren and Ferrari? Only time will tell. From the early season running, it looks as if McLaren are going to be the team to beat, and they also have a changed lineup with Sergio Perez, the Mexican, replacing the Brit, Lewis Hamilton. And Jensen Button has been retained by the team who had a decent 2012, but not quite as good as his compatriot. Sergio Perez though managed to finish 8th in last year's championship in a salvo which wasn't all too competitive. So he'll be looking for big things this year and it looks as if he's actually got a race winning car underneath him. So as I say, they're going to be one of the front runners. Will they be caught by anybody? We'll have to see. One team that has always done well in the ultimate career is Red Bull. Of course, Sebastian Vettel took the world title off us in 2011, but his teammate Mark Webber in fact outperformed him to third in the driver's standings last season, although it is rumoured that this could be Webber's final season in the sport. They were second in the World Constructors' Championship last year, and they're looking as if they're pretty tight with uh, McLaren at the top of the, uh, of the timing sheets for this season. Only time will tell, though, where they'll finish this year. After a poor second half to 2012, which saw Alonso fall to 6th and Massa to 10th in the driver's standings, Ferrari will be looking for a drastic improvement in 2013. They're looking as if they're a little bit behind Red Bull and McLaren, and maybe even Williams at the start of the season, but the big question on everybody's lips is will Felipe Massa be able to keep up the pace with Fernando Alonso, because if not, Ferrari may look to replace him in 2014. Fernando Alonso is still looking though for his third world title and once again another question that will be asked is will he be able to get it at Ferrari. Mercedes have one of the most exciting partnerships of 2013 with Lewis Hamilton joining Nico Rosberg at the Silver Arrows and the car is said to be a huge improvement on that one in 2012 which saw Nico Rosberg only manage 12th in the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton was sick of not quite being able to get that second title at McLaren, so the question is, will he be able to get it at Mercedes? They are still looking slightly off the pace of the top teams, but they may be able to close in as the season goes on. Another team who are just slightly off the pace of the top teams are Lotus, who have retained their 2012 partnership of Raikkonen and Grosjean. Grosjean had a very, very good first full season in Formula 1, managing to get 7th, although Kimi Raikkonen had definitely a season to forget on his return to the sport. Although they are still not too far from the top, they are looking as if they may in fact be the 6th fastest team in what will be a very closely fought start of the season. An incredibly disappointing 2012 season for Nico Hulkenberg, in which he finished 17th in the driver's standings, means that he has moved from Force India to Sauber in 2013, and he is partnered by the Mexican rookie driver Esteban Gutierrez, and the question on everybody's lips this season at Salba is will they be able to replicate that 2012 form which saw them compete for podiums and get Sergio Perez all the way up into 8th in the championship. At the moment though they are looking like the 7th quickest team and it's looking very very difficult for them to advance at the field. After Hulkenberg then has left for Salba, that leaves Force India reuniting their 2011 partnership of Paul Resta and Adrian Sutil. 
Like Hulkenberg, De Resta had a poor 2012, but I think that was mainly more down to the car than the drivers themselves. So De Resta will be looking to prove himself this season alongside the veteran German, and after a poor 2012, will the car be able to recover this season? There's another unchanged lineup over at Toro Rosso who have Daniel Ricciardo and Jean-Eric Verne once again. And after rumours of Mark Webber's retirement, it looks as if one of these two could be given the opportunity at Red Bull. So the 2013 season is going to be a big opportunity for either the Australian or the Frenchman to claim the seat at Red Bull in 2014. Which one will come out on top? Caterham have decided to go with a partnership of Charles Peak and Guido van der Gaard this season, with Caterham in fact taking Peak from their rivals Marussia. Although this season it's looking like the uh, Caterham team are a lot closer to the midfield and may even be able to compete for points early on in the season. But as we all know, it is very difficult for them to keep up with the development, so they may fade off to the end of the season. But will they be able to get their points early on? Finishing off then with Marussia, who have an exciting young driver partnership of Jules Bianchi and Max Chilton. Neither of the drivers have driven in Formula 1 before, although Jules Bianchi is part of the Ferrari Young Drivers program, which has seen him drive a Formula 1 car before. As always, it's going to be a battle between Marussia and Caterham all season long. But like Caterham, Marussia are also looking closer to that midfield, meaning in the early season they could be able to get points if reliability issues up the field do take place. So who will it be, Marussia or Caterham, to score the first points out of the two teams in their Formula 1 history? So that is your run through the teams, and just before we end, I'll run you through the testing results uh, from the Haraf test. And as you can see, it is a very varied top 12, with Jensen Button, in fact, being quickest, with Kimi Raikkonen in second, and myself in third, with Alonso in fourth. Rosberg in fifth and by that you may be able to tell that there are five different teams in the top five spots. My teammate Sam Bird managed a respectable ninth and a shout out to Charles Peak who managed 10th place in that catering car. But as we all know testing results are very unpredictable and with the Red Bulls in 11th and 12th when they are known to have pace it just shows you that they are a little bit unreliable as I say. Bringing up the rear of the field are the Mauritia and Caterham cars, but they have showed that they can pull out good times after the bag. So all in all, it's a very unpredictable pre-season testing, and before the season starts, it's looking all up in the air for the Australian Grand Prix. Make sure to join me there, make sure to drop a like down on the video if you've enjoyed this little preview for the 2013 season. I'll be back next week for the Australian Grand Prix for the Ultimate Career, but until then guys, take care, bye bye.